On this week's episode, we talked to a late bloomer. She went on her first date at 24. Didn't kiss that guy, though. Welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. This is your host, Matchmaker Maria. I am so happy to have you here. If you are listening, hello. But if you are watching on YouTube, hello extra. Hello. (laughs) Uh, I received all of the positive responses from last week's episode. I think it has to do with my facial reactions, and I'm so happy you get to see them on YouTube. We are there. Go there. Subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what you think. I love hearing feedback from you, and I am also super excited for you to listen to this week's episode. I have an incredible guest on. Her name is Julia, or as I like to call her, Smarter in a Sec, which is the name of her Instagram that you need to absolutely follow, Smarter in a Sec. I'm going to put that in the show notes too. Julia, welcome to the Ask a Matchmaker podcast. Thank you so much. I've been following you for probably about three years, and it was unfortunate that I found you at the end of my dating journey or else I would have heeded all of your advice. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think we started following each other around the same time. And I think, and this is why I feel like everyone needs to go follow Julia um, again at Smarter in a Sec, because your content is really fun. Like I feel smarter following you. So for those who don't know, um, Julia will post like interesting articles of the day um, or like you know, sometimes she'll post an article on like her main takeaways from it. Um, And it's not, it's not necessarily on like one subject. You tend to, you'll do politics, you'll do, you know, the gossip, you'll do the pop stuff. Like it's, it's got the whole thing. Yeah. And I think for me, I was terrible at childhood sports. So I call myself a varsity reader. So varsity reading, writing and eating, I'm a tri-varsity athlete. So those are my, those are my main strains. And so you know, during COVID, when everyone was kind of home scrolling social media, I just felt like maybe there's someone who could bring a little bit of thought and a little bit of intellect to the the social media world. So I'm also a strategy consultant by trade. And I'm also a personal brand expert partner with people across industries to change careers. So everything that I share, whether it's a meme, whether it's an article that I'm loving, whether it's a tip to level up at work, it's all in service of making everyone smarter. Yeah. And it's like really good curation. Thank you. It is. It's funny. A lot of people ask me in in my real life or people who I know online, like, what is the mental toll of being a content creator? Because it feels like to the naked eye that you're always on your phone. But my, my push to that is, you know, someone could say the same if they're a personal trainer. Someone could say the same if they're an attorney looking at their computer all day. Mm. To me, it very much feels like a muscle and I'm sure you feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Like it's like eating breakfast. It's like tying your shoes. It's like doing a workout. It just feels so natural at this point because I'm doing, I've been doing it for about three years. Yeah. No, I, uh, I feel that a way about a lot of things lately. Like I'll sometimes think to myself, wow, how does that person know how to do all that? And then I'm like, well, I mean, gosh, people ask me questions every week and I instinctively know the answer. Like, right. What's the what's the difference? You exactly. Know? Everyone has their natural aptitudes. And I just right. think I'm so glad that I found social media as someone who loves writing, who loves meeting new people. I feel like it's a natural extension of what I love doing. One of the things that I enjoy about the content that you're posting is that sometimes I've already read what you're putting up because it's the news of the day. Right. And I'm like, oh, she read it. Here's her takeaways. Let me reply back with mine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some things were released today that I would love your take on. Absolutely. Um, because, you know, we are dating on an election year. And that, yeah. that can be uh, that can be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, first off, this morning I woke up and The Cut had an article about a therapist who is a therapist to the ultra rich in New York City. Did you read that? Yes, I, I saw and I found it fascinating he's charging six hundred dollars an hour which frankly i think he could charge way more than that yeah i was like that's not i mean it's a lot right but but that's the cost of an attorney it's not less than 200 in new york anyway so right exactly i think he would he could absolutely charge more i'm all about charging your worth um and i also think it just goes to show that um no matter what situation you're in no matter how wealthy you are money really does not solve anyone's problems everyone struggles with mental health, no matter kind of what, what level of wealth they're at. Yeah. I read this article. It's, it's called, it's on the cut. It's called what it's like to be a therapist for the ultra rich by Charlotte Kells, the cuts financial advice columnist. And she interviewed, um, you know, uh, Clay Cockrell, um, for this article. And so, you know, she was talking about how he even got into this niche, 
One of the things that I found really interesting is that, okay, so he said here, you're probably familiar with the idea that once you get to a certain level of income, your happiness kind of levels off. If you go from 35,000 to 70,000, you're going to feel great. But going from 70,000 to 140,000 doesn't have the same effect. You'll be a little happier, but not in the same way. Once I learned that, I could start to understand why someone could have $100 million and still not feel like it was enough. And I think, I mean, I think his numbers are kind of correct because yeah. I mean, I know where he's taking those numbers from. I think they come from like, there's like a happiness scale. Exactly. There's right? a study that's been conducted. It doesn't though, like come into consideration of you know today's inflation. Right. Right. But, but nonetheless, I think like what he's saying is uh, like, I think about this, how much is enough Yeah. all day. Yeah. Especially even when matching clients, mm. um, you know, someone will come in saying stuff like they need to make, this is not as rare as it seems, but a person will say like, they need to make X amount of money because I make X amount of money. Right. And it's like, okay, if you both make that amount of money or more, that's a lot of money. Right. And it's also money does not measure your connection with the person. Me money does not measure your aptitude. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, talk about your connect. It doesn't measure your connection. So I think that's your challenge as well is that someone has these financial barriers and you say, well, you know, you're, you're much better suited for someone who's making half of right. that, of that specific number. I remember I had, um, a well-known CEO's daughter in my office. They wanted to hire a matchmaker and, you know, she works at one of the big financial institutions. Yeah. She's making like 1.5 million a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. You know, I, I feel like some of that is also trust. Some of that is also managing her parents' investments. Like right. I'm sure, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, she's pretty young. She was like in her early thirties and her mom was in the room and was, you know, she was explaining to us, like they were both there for this consultation. And the woman at some point said something like, I would really like for the guy to make one, 1. 1.5 million or more. Yeah. And I was just like, but you own your apartment, you have a condo, you have a house, like you have all these properties. Right. You have this much amount of money, like why, which part of this, what What exactly do you need to know? Like what exactly right. does that number get for you? What do you think her answers were? I think she said, I don't care, I want the guy who's making 1.5. Well, you know, like some women, they'll reply back and say stuff like, I want, I don't want him to be threatened by yeah. the amount of money that I make. And I can appreciate that. Although I will say that the kind of man that's threatened by the amount of money that you're making, he would have found something, another thing right, that threatens totally. him. Yeah, like yeah. that's just an easy thing yeah. to, to do, right? Yeah. It would have been something else can guarantee it. Um, but her response was like, well, I just need to know that he has a strong work ethic. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, yeah. but like, like I think, I guess I'm just taking it back because she makes enough money for multiple families to live. Right. And she could date like a big time professor at Columbia University who might have like two books to his name too. Right. And is super bright and intelligent. And right. And maybe he aspect. makes like $150,000 a year. Right. But like, okay, now you just made, because you're dating this guy, you just made a $150,000 bonus. Right. Like... I think for me, I mean, it was just an interesting conversation. I didn't say this to her. Her mother actually said that to her in the office, which I found the most amusing conversation to witness. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause she's like, what are you talking about? He does not need to make, you have enough, you have enough. Yeah. But I don't think that person understood that they have enough. Right. I think their bubble. And that's what I was getting from this guy, right? Right. The, right. the interview from the cut was that some people in that circle, they are surrounded by people who do have more. Right. So it's like, oh, I have a private chef, but I don't have a private jet. Right. And it's like. You still have a lot, though. I think especially living in New York, it's definitely you could always have more. Um, and so I when I was dating, I'm a very someone who's very ambitious, very motivated. And I just wanted the person who I was dating to be equally motivated. I didn't want to be. Um, and it's funny in the past, people have said to me, oh, you know, you're very ambitious and I don't, I don't know if you've heard of this phrase but it's almost like you want a rock and a star have you heard of that no comparison What's the phrase so someone said to me you're a star so you need a rock basically what does that mean like you have more of a shiny out there personality okay. so you need someone who's a little more boring 
to balance that out who's a little more grounded Mm -hmm. and I said well I'm really outgoing I want to be with someone who's outgoing who's kind of loud and that's exactly who my boyfriend is I'm so glad I um found him but it was funny because that person um said that to me and I was like wait should I be seeking out really quiet meat guys because I'm more loud and out there Uh um what's your take on that I, there's no science that says that yeah. just because someone's extroverted, they need to be with an introvert or right, an extrovert, right. right? I mean, I'm the world's biggest extrovert right. and I'm married to an introvert and right. we balance each other out. So maybe I am the star and he is the rock right, in this right, uh, right. anecdote, right? Right. But it sounds like you met a person who yes. you feel comfortable with yes. that you admire. And I think that's that's what's most important, I think, that like you can date this person. Right, exactly. Um. um And it's funny because I had a very late start to dating. Tell me more about that. So I went to NYU and then I lived in China for a year and then I went to Kellogg for business school. And through that time, I was always more focused on myself and I would, you know, meet guys through friends or, you know, see them out. And I just feel like I was more interested in what they had to say versus Mm -hmm. like, oh, that guy's cute for me. I feel like. I'm totally someone who I don't never had a physical type because I was always, if a guy interests me or makes me laugh, I'm way more interested in that. And so I felt like up until I was 25, I was way more focused on my career. I almost didn't even think about dating whatsoever. Uh, And so I really went on my first date when I was 25. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what kind of date was it? It wow, was that's really hinge. late, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it was Holy through crap. Hinge. Oh, so this um, is like a stranger. Yeah, just so your through first hinge. date in life. Yeah. Was with a stranger you met over the yes. internet post. Or 24, your... 24, but still. Very... You had finished grad school. And finished grad school. And that was my first. Wow. Yeah. Did you kiss him? No. No. I, so yeah. wait, when was your first kiss? I think, yeah, like 24, 25. Wow. Yeah. So I just, again, it just wasn't something that I was focused on because I just felt like, okay, I want to build my career. I want to do this. And I just felt like the guys that I was meeting in my real life or because I went to NYU, which is mostly women. And um, and I felt like my grad school was also a very what small did you, circle. What did you study at NYU? Uh, communication. So it's sure, a very, okay. yeah. you know, female centric right. major. So like I went to NYU. There's a lot of guys. Yeah, there, yeah, but... yeah. Um, so it was funny because I I wasn't shy about the fact that I was a late bloomer, but as the years, you know, crept on and in your mid twenties, of course, your friends start pairing off. And I reached this point right before COVID when all my friends were paired off, basically. I was 26, 27. And I was like, wow, I've never even had a boyfriend. And I feel so juvenile hanging out with all my friends and their significant others. I just feel like a little kid almost. And a recommendation that I make to people who are late bloomers Mm -hmm. is I actually made a spreadsheet for dating. Data-driven dating. Let's go. Data-driven dating. So Again, I didn't know what I was looking for. And I'm a very kind of nerdy, curious person. So when I would go on dates, I would create this spreadsheet that was, what what did I learn from that? What did I like about that guy? And what kind of learning is it? So for instance, I would go on a date with a guy. He wouldn't ask me any questions about myself. I was pretty much interviewing him, not interested in me. And my finding was, okay, I obviously need to meet someone who's interested in what I have to bring to the table because right. I'm just asking about him mm-hmm. or um, someone who really doesn't have hobbies or interests beyond sports or they're not interested in it right or gaming i'm not super into that so someone who's intellectually curious doesn't matter what they're passionate about i just don't want to be in the corner out of sports or every single weekend so those kind of learnings i i really recommend because i feel like if i didn't do that then i would have gone in my head about oh my gosh i just want to date with this guy and like he was super boring but he's not texting me whatever and then you have to think wait but I didn't even have a great feeling when I left the date and now right. I'm so in my head about it. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually just gave that yeah. exact advice to a friend of mine yesterday. She messaged me. She's like, I just did 12 date rule with this guy, but I think he's still dating other people. Like, how do I tell him like, you know, the next step? And I yeah. go, before you do anything, do you want this man to be your boyfriend? Right. Exactly. And she's like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I wanted to be someone's girlfriend. It didn't cross my mind. Do I want this man to be my boyfriend? I go, okay, well, 
I think the fact that you don't immediately come with an answer is an answer. Right, exactly. And another metric that I used is, do I want to go on another date with this guy or do I want to go home and watch Netflix? And 99% of the time, and again, this was probably after three dates. I agree with the rule that if you had somewhat of a nice time, you yeah. should go on another date. But if you're really thinking through the whole date, I just oh, want to yeah. be in my bed, curled up watching Netflix or with friends or reading a book, et cetera. This is, this is a no. Yeah. So I very much put myself first, which I think every, like you have to think about your own needs. Um, and another kind of situation situations that I would get myself in while dating was again, I was, I'm a very curious nerdy kind of person. So I would go on dates with guys with really interesting personal backstories. And <laughs> I would be way more interested in like their personal history than them. So for instance, I went on this one date with um, a guy who was ex Hasidic. We had a four hour date. I was so curious. And <laughs> Are you how, Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. Oh, wow. Then that's like super right. interesting. Was, and I grew up in New Jersey near Muncie. So okay. I was kind of near that community. But it was just he had a really interesting backstory. Sure. And then at the end of the four hour date, he asked me, do you, oh, I had such a great time. I'm like, well, I kind of just got a whole, you know, download in Jewish history. I kind of feel like I'm good. You but, got a, you got a the the lecture, right? Exactly. I got a whole lecture, but <sighs> this is uh, why I don't like taking non Greek people to Greek restaurants. <laughs> yeah, like <but laughs> I refuse to take non Greek people to Greek restaurants. Like people are like, oh, let's go. No, because you're the historian. The yeah, whole time. I don't. I'm not. I go to Greek restaurants with Greek people. If yeah. I go to Greek restaurant, only for like someone's birthday because I was invited. I'm not willing to pay for food I make on Tuesdays. No, 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 no. no that's absolutely not, not. That's not interesting. No. Um, so there was that guy, and then there was a. But so yeah, during the date. I was thinking, oh, wait, I really like this guy. But after, during the spreadsheet, I reflected, I didn't like him at all. I was just interested. He was just an interesting person. Yeah. And I really caution that with other people who are late bloomers. Like, you really have to separate. Because if you're interested in people, that's kind of dating on a platter. That's your, dating is learning about people. Dating is being curious. And so if I didn't want to go on a date, I would just say, okay, I know this might be a shitty date, but... Am I going to learn something new, even if it's about sports team that I don't care about? I mean, are you going to learn something about new about yourself? Too? Right. You exactly. Know, for us, um, I was just talking to a client and he's been on three or four dates with us. And he's like, well, you know, in the first two, they weren't, you know, really that great. And I was like, yeah, I just met you. You know, yeah. like, I can't if I could get it right on the first try, right. we wouldn't be having six month contracts. Right. We'd right. have two month contracts. Right. right. Um, but like, you know, I spent three hours with you before setting you up. Me, my team, like all of us have spent a lot of time with you, like three or four hours collectively. Right. But when I set you up on like your first date through this, through our service, I don't know what you're like on dates. No, I don't know. You know, like, I don't know what you're doing. Right. Um, I need you to go on the date, get your dating personality out there. And then you're going to come back and you're going to tell me how the date went. You're going to give me feedback. And she's going to tell me how the date went and give me feedback. Right. And then from there, I can calibrate as we go. You know, we just got a client um, in a in a relationship. I, I think she's the one. And mm -hmm. it was like a seven, seventh match. Mm. And we're, we're really proud of this. But if you see the calibration that it took, like three or four dates, and then after that, date five, date six, and date seven, he could have married any of these three. At the end, it just had to do with, like, luck. Right. right? But, like, we were getting closer is the point, right? And I think, you know, you're talking about – one of the things that I like about late bloomers is that I think dating is seen less as, like, you've learned to push out the societal pressure. And now it is what you said, like dating on a platter, like, OK, so from this buffet, what what am I actually going to think tastes right. good? Right. Versus my own preconceived notions of like, oh, I grew up with chicken nuggets, so I'm going to like the chicken. Right. Right. You know, and I think that's such a weird analogy, but let's keep it. Yeah. Uh, but do you know I like that. No, I, I totally. And I think it was refreshing to start with a almost a blank slate at yeah. a later age because I saw friends have relationships that they weren't so into and their learnings from that. So it's almost like I was more prepared to um, God, launch how, into the dating world. How different my life would be if I just focused and didn't date until I turned 24. <laughs> but it's also probably be president right now of the United States. <laughs> no, I, we need a Greek president. I mean, truly. Um, but 
You know, you could have had him, Dukakis. Yeah. Okay, I have a photo of me, two years old. He's like holding me in his hand, That's arms. So cute. I've got a little Dukakis. That's his last name. So he ran cute. against Bush. Only two states voted for him. Everyone so was sad. like the most red tsunami ever. <laughs> oh my god! I think two or three states. Uh, it's awful, awful. Could, could could have been you. But I've been a Democrat since yeah. I was two and a half. Yeah. No, I same here. But um, <laughs> same, very much same here. Um, yeah, twenty twenty four election. Twenty twenty four. That's another. So yeah, let's talk about that point. for a second. Yeah. Uh, you know, the last twenty four hours, I cannot get enough of Tom Cotton asking the CEO of TikTok. You know, are you Chinese? Oh my! And God. he keeps like, I'm from Singapore. Okay, but do you have Chinese citizenship? So I served in the military for two years in Singapore. Okay, but where are you really from? And I'm just like, does I keep thinking like, does he think Singapore is like Hong Kong, where it's like attached to it? Like I'm he, trying to he figure has no out. No idea. He has no idea. And then that other senator, I forget their names because they're all idiots. Um, he goes, he asks the Snapchat CEO, what does yada, yada, yada mean? And I'm like, <laughs> what do you think? Like the guy's like, I don't know what you're referencing. And I'm like, and I'm like, and my mind is like, what does yada, yada, yada mean? And I'm thinking like, is he like singing Megan Thee Stallion lyrics or is he saying <laughs> like some like Yiddish? Yeah. Yeah. It could it be could, anything. It could be either. The delivery is off. Yeah. So weird. I, I just, I can't um, get enough of those clips. They're great. No, they're TikTok always surfaces them to me. It's, uh, people, it's because it's yeah. on purpose because they're talking shit about TikTok. And of course, TikTok is going to, TikTok's like, love us, hate your US government officials. No, and it is. It's working. It's funny. I'm sure you have <laughs> older relatives who are like, why are you on TikTok? Why are you TikTok content? No, my, my, no, my, my parents, love. my mom loves TikTok. Oh, she does. Okay. My mom, my mom can't really see. So she goes on TikTok on her iPad. And she's like, I love learning from these women. Like, I they they speak so nice. And no, I my, love my mom loves TikTok. Okay, so she's bought in. I don't want my dad to learn about TikTok. Because he would be addicted? Yes. Yeah. Right now at our house, and you can ask my assistant, all day we just hear the Super Mario theme song, which <laughs> used to be my ringtone. Yeah. And I've had to stop it because it's confusing me now. My dad, we we downloaded whatever we got a Nintendo like yeah, the original yeah. and we plugged it in so that I don't want my kids playing with everything right now. So right. I was like, you can play what I played when I was six years old. Yeah. You're six. That's you can cute. play yeah. Super Mario brothers. Yeah. You know, dun, 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 you know, it's the best. So my dad now, while my kids are in school is like playing for two hours each day. <laughs> and I'm just hearing this music in the background. Cause I'm working from home. <laughs> Cause I live in a multi-generational household <laughs> and uh, yeah. So it's like, it's been fun. Like it's uh that's funny. You know what? Your your dad can be better at video games than your kids, probably. My, you know, my six year old he got to level four this weekend. Oh. So hey, he found out about the portals. Oh yeah, that's you know that's key. That's key. Yeah, I do. I do love Super Mario. The, uh, I'm sure you saw the Super Mario's movie. The uh, the John Leguizamo. The new one. No, I, I saw it, but you didn't love it. <sighs> I to me, it's a. I liked it. Like yeah. I, the, the kind of movies. Oh my God. We should talk about movies. Yeah. The kind of movies that I want to watch right now. It basically needs to be a movie I've already seen. I can't handle like more, more content. I, I've I'm tapping out. I have other, I have other priorities right now that like learning and we just started the bear. Okay. What do you think about that? I'm, uh, I'm on episode two. Okay. I understand why they've won Emmys already. I'm like, okay, the, yeah. I, I'm just seeing the, the cinematography surface. is great. Yeah. 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 And I, and I'm starting to get, I have a lot of questions, but yeah. I'll learn that in the next, you know, episode three, but you know, it's like, I'm starting to get the content delayed. Cause I'm like, I need to be in the right headspace right. to see this. But you know, I just had my son watch the little princess. What do you think? Okay, so first of all, I kept staring at him during special scenes, especially, you know, like, I don't know if anyone here has watched The Little Princess, but it's a I movie have, that yeah. came out in 1994, yeah. and it's about a little girl who's British, but I guess she used to live in India, and she's British white, and she her father needs to go to World War One. They didn't know it was World War One yet. It was just the war. But anyway, and... Um, I think it's like 1916. So he moves her to New York so she can go to this boarding school while he's away at war. Her mother's dead. And he gives her a locket and, you know, off he goes. Right. And then in the war, he dies. And then she becomes like an orphan and a servant to this boarding school. And it's run by this crazy woman and whatever. But the storytelling is really good. You know, she's got Becky. It's like a whole thing. 
And, you know, when she becomes an orphan and she takes the chalk and makes a circle on the thing, I look at my son and he's just like tears are just oh. flowing. And I was just like, wow, this is like touching him. And then the scene where she's um, she got like a sticky bun and then she saw two poor girls, like two girls who were like hungry. I don't remember. I feel like I haven't seen the movie in so long. I need to yeah. rewatch clearly. We're also different ages. So I was yeah. like nine when this came out and you were a fetus. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but when, but so there's a point in the movie where she finds a coin and she buys a sticky bun. And as she's about to take her first bite, there's two other little girls who are like, you know, like just want some, I want, I, I'm hungry. And so she goes and like gives the sticky bun to these two girls so they can eat. And then Yanni pauses the TV and he's like, mama, I would do that too. And I was like, so I'm just like crying. Oh. Anyway, so we were both like just crying a lot. And then once the movie was over, he came on my lap and he just like, I just need to hug you. Oh. And I was just like, oh my God, like, please no, don't grow up. Just stay this, just this moment. I need it forever. That's so precious. <sighs> Anyway, so if anyone needs any uh, movie recommendations, The Little Princess. I will be rewatching that. I also was living for the Coors unboxing. I probably yeah, am yeah. mispronouncing that. Coors. Um, it's cool. Coors. Um, he, he's a star. He's a star. And yeah. I feel like probably people say all the time you should. He Does he ask you, oh, I want to be on social media or no? He keeps asking to have a YouTube channel. Yeah. I keep telling him no. Yeah. Um, he has a Roblox persona. Yeah. That, you know, he has three friends on. I'm not going to say his <laughs> yeah. name on it because it's a funny name. But yeah. um, his Roblox persona is a whole different person. Does not look like him. Uh, and uh, yeah. and But no, I, I think like when we I like I'm really mindful of like my kids and their involvement in my stuff. The Godess Unbox, like my husband and I, we had to have like a lot of conversations about this. Yeah. Um, we both agreed. We're not, there's no disagreement. We just want to make sure we're on the same page. Right, so I was like, right. if Yanni wants to do it, he can do it. And if there are days where he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't do it. And that's why not this year and not in all the videos, he wasn't in all of them. Right. Cause I knew I was like, oh, he doesn't want to do it today. That's cool. You know, we'll just do tomorrow another one. Or right, right, right. Um, I think this year was a little different because it was creams. Last year, he didn't want to miss a single day because we did the MAC cosmetics one and oh, they yeah, include he like that. yeah yeah he wanted like the lipstick on his cheeks yeah. and like my, the eyeliner mustaches like he had more to play with right right so next year i have to do like a makeup a, a again. makeup one i have to definitely do a makeup well so, you should get selena gomez yeah rare beauty come on down you we should gotta... get net porte to gift you the oh, net porte whatever 500 did they have that they have net porte has an incredible it's either 250 or 300 i didn't know you pronounced it like that so now i'm learning too <laughs> yeah it's um I, I i'm new to it as well but um that i've i've seen a bunch of influencers open up yeah um and unbox it and it, it has a lot of makeup products yeah uh yeah i think it's funny because my daughter likes to get involved too. And we, we tell them too, like, I'm going to post this. This is what it means. Yeah. Are you comfortable? What's their response to, you know, when you say like multiple people, thousands of people are seeing, do they grasp that? My kids have seen me on TV. Okay. So they know that you're So they know there's figure. something yeah. going on. What's funny is when they're watching TV, they don't understand why they can't skip the commercials because they're in the generation that's never had, had commercials. Right, right. So like when I was on CBS mornings in December, um, there's like the teaser where you see my face and then there's a commercial and then there's the segment and the commercial goes on and Yanni's like, skip, skip. <laughs> where's the skip button? I can't find it. And he's like getting out of the channel. And my husband's like, this is real TV. So they don't, they don't understand that, but they're, they're getting an idea. Like my son knows like there's a book coming. Yeah. So he has appointed himself to be the official illustrator of the book. I love that. And he tells everyone like he'll, he's like, my mom's writing a book and I'm going to illustrate the whole book. And I was like, okay. Like maybe he can do a little author's page. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll, we'll, maybe I'll dry. just, he'll, maybe we'll just do like a, a second book self-published, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it'll be like the five dating dilemmas and he can illustrate those dating dilemmas like, you know, <laughs> ghosting. Um, yeah. Like, you know, Yanni, can you please, when you hear someone ghosted someone, what does that look like? Right. And you'll have a seven year, you know, he's six now, but let's say seven year old's drawing of what ghosting is or <laughs> what else could we ask him? We could ask That's him hilarious. like, you know, he didn't want to, um, that person didn't want to date that person because they don't vote the way they want them to vote. Oh, that's Draw good. It. Yeah. Because he knows what voting is. They yeah. vote at school for like best Sesame Street character. 
It's you so know, cute. so he knows what that is. Or I can say what other things could we say? Um, what what else could he draw with dining dilemmas? Oh, the person unmatched them before they showed up for the date. Yeah, you know, or draw it, or breadcrumbing, or oh, yeah, what's breadcrumbing, <laughs> or any of those. Yeah. Oh, what what's breadcrumbing? No, no, no. I mean, like oh, he oh, could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I would say to him like, this page is about breadcrumbing. Go draw draw what that draw is. What that yeah. Is. So yeah, he's uh, he's practicing though. He yeah. he's really good at the etch a sketch. Oh my gosh, that's such a throwback. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, dude, this year I did only like, I, he, Santa Claus got him a light bright. That, that, that was one of my favorites growing that's, up. Yeah, same. It's Santa, one of my Santa got it for me too. I love that. So, yeah. Have you done the phone test with your kids? What's a phone test? Which is basically you ask um, people of different generations if you were picking up a phone call and you didn't oh, have yeah. your phone. Yeah, it's the best. It's either our generation goes like this right we're both millennials and then younger generation just go like this i mean what's funny is my daughter has like a fake iphone yeah like a like a plastic mini mouse iphone that came with her purse <laughs> and she will be like on the phone like talking and sometimes she'll have it on speakerphone and then <laughs> somebody goes hold on i need to take a photo you know and i'm <laughs> i'm just like wow okay like you know yeah. very different he, my my child does know his the phone number he knows my phone number yeah um he knows our address and i my they're both no they're both aware of stranger danger my mm -hmm. daughter's great though because if someone says hi to her at target she i don't even know who taught her this <laughs> but she goes you're not my mom fire fire <laughs> <laughs> so at target it's great because <laughs> like i like i'll be like literally right there just looking at like brushes and you just have my daughter going you're not my mom fire fire <laughs> it's great it's awesome that's spicy i, uh, I yeah. love that but then at the then at the my kids are both extroverted so even at the um when we get to the checkout they're yeah. like having full-on conversations with the checkout person like, so what are you doing after this? And stop <laughs> being intrusive. Like, stop asking them questions. But you know what? They're just like, I think they... They're just curious. They're just kids. They're also observing me and my husband. My husband and I are like, you know, we're really involved in our own community. Right. We talk a lot to other people. Like, even though my husband's introverted. Right. He has a Tavli club, which is like a backgammon club. Mm. Um, he coaches Greek theater. Like, you know, we're involved. Right. So he sees that interaction. Like, your kids are going to... Pat, you know they pick up on these things and they do them i yeah it's all about modeling yeah it's all about modeling yeah so yeah and i i think like the phone use obviously i don't have kids yet but the phone use is really interesting around kids you know too. people who don't have kids are the perfect parents because they don't know yeah right i have, you no, have idea. no idea like I, every time i, I hear no someone idea. who's like oh i would never give my kids an ipad and i'm like cool you just wait girl just wait you just wait well yeah it's funny because yeah, I just feel like there's so like a lot of judgment coming from people who don't have kids, but it's like you truly cannot judge. Another thing is I'm in the stage of life where some friends are single, some friends are are married and some friends are having kids and I realize I really don't know the stages of kid development. Like yeah. it's like, "Oh, my kid is 6 months. Are they walking? Are they you know, I, I, yeah. I'm i so removed from all of that. I just right. have no idea. And in a few in a few years, you will when you have more kid interaction. Yeah. But I remember with my daughter's godfather who lives in Greece, we had gone to the beach a year and a half ago or something. And it was his first time interacting with kids because um, none of his friends have had kids. So, you know, he brought my daughter like stuff you would never bring an eight month old. I was like, I can't give like, I like think what he, did he give? Um, like chicken nuggets from McDonald's and, um, like <laughs> a lot of lollipops and like a Snickers, like, you know, the Greek versions of these things. Right, no right, right. And I was like, I really appreciate you giving these things. She's eight months old. Yeah, she can't. She can't have like, was she eight months? No, she was like a, cause it was, you know, she was a pandemic baby. She was like maybe, oh, she was like 14 months. But I'm not giving my kids like jawbreakers at 14 no, months. And that's what there gonna, was essentially. Like there were these yeah. things. Or like the other thing I was like, I was holding her like, you know, trying to put her in a nap. And I said, Hey, can you just take Yanni in for a dip in the ocean and come back like in the beach yeah. and come back? And he's like, Oh, I can see him from here. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> he's, he's two, he's three. Yeah. You have to go, you have you to actually to go, go in with and him. Watch him. And, yeah. then, and then I could see them interacting in the water and he didn't realize like, he didn't, he didn't know how to 
operate and it was yeah. fine like now he's great but right. you know it was just like very awkward it's a it's a big gap another thing that i wanted to share with your audience um so a friend of mine is 36 she's single mm -hmm. and she just got out of a relationship and i thought this how she pitched this idea to me was brilliant so she's like hey i'm on the apps i have told her about you and to speak with a professional matchmaker oh. as well she's frozen her eggs too okay but she also said i'm doing this thing called man of the month and i said what is that what's man of the month so this is you assign 12 friends to set you up on a date every month of the year so my month is february and i you know i i love setting people up i've set up one couple who's now married and i think that when you're single people always intend to set you up or they'll say, oh, I have, you know, I want to set you up, but they never actually follow through. And it's a great homework assignment. This is for, so good. It's a homework assignment for someone to say, hey, you have a deadline. So my month is February. I have to set her up. Do you have a guy? With someone I don't. So anyone So tell me her information. Maybe I Yes, have. yes, yes. She is fabulous. Um, I need to do a shout out for her on TikTok. I need to do a, a shout out for her on um, Instagram stories as well. But I just think it's such a smart hack because people always want to set you up but they don't actually follow through mm. and i when i was single i found that very annoying that people would say oh i have this guy for you but then you don't want to be annoying and pester them to set annoying. you up um i was annoying sometimes and was like hey what about this XYZ? is why i don't think you should ever ask men to set you up straight yeah. men because they they're like, all of my friends are idiots or you could do better than my friends. And I'm like, that's none of your business. I'm just asking you to like. Right. Because your perception of your friend from like growing up is that he's a disgusting idiot, but he's actually a like great a, guy. You, you don't know, know their dating personality. Right, right? Exactly. You don't know him through that yeah. specific lens. So when I was single, I remember, um, you know. Like you, I guess I made a list of like, okay, here are the things that are going to work out. Uh, here are the things that I, I value in a partner with someone that I'd like to have kids with one day. Like, here are the things that I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, I thought of like, which of my friends is probably friends with someone like this yeah. who has these attributes. They're probably, you know, breads of a feather flock together. And I thought of two guys and I didn't go up to them and say like, oh, will you set me up? They're not going to do that. They have jobs right they're not thinking about me like that like no. you know because i think they also have to find i think your friend also has to see you as like dateable and exactly they're not dating you right so exactly. they're like they're not seeing you from that lens either it's, it goes both ways right they're not thinking about their friends they're also not thinking about you yeah and but instead i went to these two guys and i said hey next time with your friends you have to invite me yeah and a week later one of them was like i'm going out for drinks with my friends you told me to invite you i'm inviting you great thank you showed up Nine of his friends were there. Five of them were not single, but four of them were. Amazing. And one of them would end up being my husband, which, you know. It worked it, out. It worked out. You kind of have to insert yourself. If I yourself. had asked that guy, though, because I think about it all the time, if I'd asked him, like, will you set me up? Right. I think knowing the relationship he has with George and knowing how he only, you know, my, his personal feelings of me, which, by the way, only admiration, right? Like, right, we have right. so much mutual respect for each other, right, me and this person. Right. Um, but I think he would have said, oh, Maria's going to eat this guy up. Right, because you're very extroverted and your husband's were introverted. He yeah. wouldn't have put you two together No, he would have yeah. never done that. And I remember when George and I started connecting, you know, we, I, it's such a memory. I, have, I remember everything about those three days that I had first met George through all of his friends. Like we were yeah. all hanging out, brunch, Freedom Trail, all of it, right? Yeah. This was in Boston. Um, but I remember at some point we left George on what is what is their subway called i forget the t the t yes okay, yeah we left him on the t because we were going to go you know to their apartment and we left him there and i remember seeing his face and then i was like kind of looking out the window like mm. and then i look to my friend who my two friends him and his girlfriend now they're married who introduced us and they were like so you like, you like George? <laughs> like very confused. Yeah. They were so confused. Like they were happy for my friend. I mean, yeah. they were happy for their friend. They were happy yeah, for yeah. George. Like, damn, good, you know, good job, George. Yeah. But also they were like, really? And I yeah. was like, what's not to like, like you like him, right? Like right. he's the best guy. Like they were saying, like, I remember that ride so well because they spent the next 20 minutes talking my ear off about him. Aww. But I was like, I'm in, like right. I'm, 
you, why I'm are you sold. surprised? You know, you, like, you love him so much. Right? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know I was gonna love him. I, right, I, right. I've only been on like one date with him by now. No, but I'm like, saying his friends. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. they had such nice things to say about him. Which, by the way, like I I say this all the time when I do agape intensive. Uh, which, speaking of which, if you have not enrolled, go in the show notes. There's a link there for virtual and in person. All right. So in agape intensive, I always talk about like there was this instance with a guy that I was dating back in 2010 when I finally like. I think like two or three months in, I finally met one of his friends. Mm. He was kind of like gatekeeping that. And he claims it was because, you know, oh, he was visiting from a different country. Like, you know, it was like summer visas or whatever. But it was not that. He just didn't have friends. Yeah, red flag. Right? Red, red flag, flag right there. But red then flag. when I did meet the one friend that he was close to, immediately he goes, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Maria, it's nice to meet you. What are you doing with this asshole? <laughs> oh. And I was like, that night I had to break up with him because that interaction with supposed one of your closest friends gave me such a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, your friend is subconsciously warning me. Oh, yeah. That you're an asshole. And I was like, my suspicions have been confirmed. Yeah. Like, you're not good. Yeah. Um, you can't keep good company. And his friend, by the way, was absolutely enjoyable, like a nice guy, you know, whatever. But like, I, it was too you much. You should have gone on a date with him. <laughs> No, or but, he lives in another yeah, country. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. But like, what I'm trying to say here is that like, I cannot picture a scenario where someone turns to me and says, "Oh, George, he's an asshole." Like, I right, really, and <laughs> also, yeah, I mean, good on the friend for confirming, but also, yeah, it's just people an interesting, will tell you, yeah. and like, I think even there's going to be people listening to this episode right now, who you know are going to be like, oh, yeah, that confirms a lot of things that I was feeling with an ex. Like it's, I'm, I think a lot of this is giving language and validity to other people's experiences. Yeah. I'm always sure, I'm always curious what your take on this is. And I'm sure you've talked about this in your Wednesday Q&A, but what do you do if your friend is dating someone who you don't like? What's your, what's your kind of Bible version of right. what to say, what to do? It's so funny because we're dealing with that right now. Uh, not one of my friends, but a friend of a friend. Um, they're like, I don't like this person. And the more I hear about that person, I'm like, I don't like them either. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think what I've learned is to, you shouldn't tell people like, I don't, you know, you shouldn't be dating this person because right. people will date that person out of spite. Of course. I, I've seen that go hardcore, right? Yeah. But what I would sometimes ask, like when you know, when you're out to brunch or on the phone, like, can you remind me what are the top five qualities you're looking for in a, in someone you want to spend the rest of your life with? Hmm. And they might describe the guy they're dating, but they're, or the woman that they're dating, but they might not. Right. And then you could say like, do you think the person you're currently dating is exhibiting those traits? Like try That's to a get, great reframe. Try to get yeah. your feelings out of it and just let them figure it out. And you're not trying to judge them. You're not trying to have a debate. You're just, right. you're just putting the mirror to the face, essentially. I think that's a great reframe. Because people will not only marry someone out of spite, they'll have kids. Oh, yeah. Out of spite. Yeah. And then, listen, there's other times where the reason why you don't like someone, um, well, that's their business. Yeah. Like, I don't necessarily agree. Like, I remember my in-laws, my mother-in-law specifically, she didn't like me for like eight years, but... It was not something that if you asked her why, it was always like, because she's not from Crete, which is an island in Greece. <laughs> you can't change that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm like, I'm still Greek. Yeah. Like, uh, you know. <laughs> right. But she, like, it was, like, she was blocking on that. You know, she was. And now do you guys have a nice relationship? We have a great relationship. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Like, she was able talk. to get over that. I don't know if she'll ever admit that. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm so happy she doesn't speak English to know what is being said on this podcast. <laughs> Um, it's not something she doesn't know, obviously, cause we've had our own shared experiences, but right. you know, I'm very proud of where we're at and amazing. I don't hold grudges. Like yeah. I was dying for her to like me. Yeah. Like I was, um, I don't know if you watch Grey's Anatomy, but I was straight up Meredith. Like I was like, you know, love me, choose me, <laughs> pick me. Like, like I was just dying for that. And then one day, just like a flip of a, you know what it was? It was COVID. Really? I feel like COVID was like, oh, another summer without like, you know, it could be, we go there for two months a year, you know, right, she sees right. my kids. And, right, right. Um, I think that like COVID, I think maybe straightened things out a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, maybe also realizing that a lot of George's friends who are from that city who moved to America, um, they didn't marry Greek people. And that's right. not, I, by the way, I love everyone that they married. They're my personal friends. Right. But 
you know, she gets to have a relationship with me that in a language that she understands. Right, right. And, you know, some of her friends don't have that with their daughter-in-laws. Right. So it's like, you need, you know, you're so, I think she was so hell bent on me being from the same island. Right. From a different island. Which, you know, by the way, these islands don't you, even you, have you hate towards each other. Yeah, you can't that, get everything. The islands don't have hate towards each other. I was like, yeah. really? We're not even rivals. Like, I'm not even... Like, like it was just so it. beyond. Yeah. And I, th- I think the funniest part for me is that they, my mother-in-law adores my parents. Oh, really? So I was like, how do you like them and not like me? Like, what? <laughs> it, was it explicit throughout the eight years or she would just kind of ignore you? Oh, it was like, who's explicit? Like, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, no, it was like, it was uncomfortable at times. But luckily we live like 5,000 miles away. So I was just like, all right. Yeah. Uh, it was funny because I used to take it personally. And then seven years in, which is, I think is what helps seven years in my brother-in-law. So my sister-in-law's husband was like, you think this is personal? And I go, yeah. And he goes, it's not like, she doesn't like me either. And I was like, <laughs> well, why doesn't she like you? You're from like literally the same neighborhood. Yeah. And he's like, oh, because I'm bald. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so that was the day I was just like, oh, this isn't personal. Like, and then the moment I stopped reacting to things. Yeah. Cause I would get like, Oh my God. You know. Right. But you can't. Ch- and I think also, especially with older people, older people are set in their ways. And I would just, I learned yeah. to change. So my sister-in-law taught me this. She's like, just change anytime something comes up where you don't want to talk, just change the subject, meet, like pivot. So yeah. she'd say something and I go, what are you making for lunch today? And like, <laughs> that helped a lot. That was like the best tip ever. And oh, now we're buddies now, you know, um, like I can, I love hanging out with her. She like, she's got, you know, she's got a lot of wisdom. And I love that. she did a really great job raising two incredible kids. Wow. Like my, I cannot, I won the lottery of sister-in-laws. Wow. Like I, she's shout out to Athena. She's amazing. She doesn't listen to this podcast, but, oh. uh, but she's like, I love my sister-in-law. I love the husband she's married to. Like, I genuinely love these people. And, um, I, I, she did a great job raising two incredible kids. So like, I only have respect for her amazing and that's all i wanted that's yeah, all you I just wanted, from wanted the that beginning. acceptance and that love and yeah that's all i wanted you got it yeah yeah and so, yeah older finally. people you just have to stick it around let them come but around. to go back to your original question yeah. like if someone doesn't like if you don't like someone ask yourself why you don't like them and if it's reasonable right Look, there's right. a lot of people that we shouldn't like right maybe your friend is dating a narcissist maybe right. your friend is dating someone who emotionally manipulates people which is a narcissist maybe right. they're dating someone who doesn't have their life together and it doesn't seem like they have the resources to get their life together right 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 and that, those resources are not necessarily financial i know plenty of people who are very well off financially who do not have their life together right, right. um yeah. like you know having Having your network, having your support group, having some emotional resilience. And you think you think that's not well, you have to remind your friend, like, hey, what exactly do you want out of this relationship? Like, what exactly do you want from a relationship? Yeah. And is this relationship it? Yeah. Like they need to and just just plant the seed. Eventually it'll sort itself out. Mm. It's the moment you start saying stuff, people will people will spite Mary, man. No, I've I've seen that, absolutely. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention as two ways that when I was in my dating phase that I met interesting people is get involved in your college's alumni association. Yes. Um, I was a career and networking chair of the Kellogg club of New York for two years and met super interesting people who were in years past or new graduates and, I didn't even meet anyone, end up meeting anyone in a dating context, but it just opened up my social network at a time where I felt like my social circle, while I adored my friends, all of them, all my closest friends were paired off at that time. So I felt like, hey, I need to do something that is going to open me up, challenge me, and maybe it will allow me to find my person. Maybe it won't. But I think every college has one. And if your college doesn't, you know, start it in your city. Not, Not only start it ask a friend of yours, Hey, what college did you go to? When's their next alumni network? Can you bring a yes, friend? Very smart. I have been to like a few Yell club stuff. I used to belong. I, I, I one of my friends was in the Toastmasters on okay. 40, I want to say 44th street, which I think is the Yell clubs. Mm. And a lot of people there were like Yell grads yeah. who were doing Toastmasters. And I would just come in, you know, $20 and get to have lunch and yeah. watch some people do some public speaking at lunch hour. This is great. Why not? I would Why meet not? so many people. And yeah. like, I'll tell you something, Midtown Toastmasters, half of them are expat Europeans who are just trying to work on their dialect. 
I'm telling you. Good tip. You, get on it. Good tip. You Another know? group that is online, but I'm not sure you know about, it's called Vouched. What's Vouched? So Vouched is this Facebook group that I, I'm in a very Is this the opposite of like, are we dating the same yes, guy group? Yes, it's groups? basically the opposite. So I actually joined for a friend because I love setting friends up and I just talked about my Plus you have that February man of the month thing, assignment. Yeah. Like I am hunting for my friend. So this Vouch group is, hey, I am pitching a friend or I'm pitching my daughter or I'm pitching, you know, a colleague of mine in this group, men and women. There are more women posted than sure. men, well, of course. There's way better women than men. Always. I mean, honestly, straight men are really lucky that sexual orientation is not a choice because <laughs> who would choose this? Really? Fair. But oh. um, I've seen really interesting people posted um, who range from 20s to, you know, 60s and up. Yeah. Hey, you know, my mom has been single for X amount of years. Oh. She's looking to date. And I, th that was a match that I saw in the group. So it's called Vouch. They have it in New York. They have it in Chicago. Just search Vouched on Facebook, and it's a great place. That's great. Um, also, if you are in a Facebook group, whether it's related to, um, you know, no, no matter the topic of the Facebook group, there's anonymous posts. So, for instance, I'm in a few groups here in the city where it's just based on a specific neighborhood, the neighborhood where I live. And I've seen a few posts, post anonymously, hey, I'm looking to date. Um, this is what I'm looking for. And people do get matches from that. I don't, yeah. again, know the quality, but I think it's, if you just put yourself out there, you never know what will happen. I think, you know, you can only, you can only be provide opportunities when you put yourself available to those yeah, opportunities, right? Absolutely. So like, this is why I always tell people like, just join, like, yes, most of my clients are New York City, DC, like that Northeast corridor, right? Right, Philly, right. New Jersey. Um, but you know, we do have clients in California. We do take sometimes in Chicago. We have taken in St. Louis and Atlanta and even Toronto. It just depends on like you being part of that database. So I have like enough people to choose from. Right. But also we get requests from matchmakers. Um, I was mentioning to you before the start of the show uh, privately that, you know, there's, you know, the matchmaking industry is, it's a proper industry. It has a certifying body called the mm -hmm. GLI. And it also has a trade association called the Matchmakers Alliance. And in the Matchmakers Alliance, like we do a lot of like, communication and collaboration. So for instance, you know, a Gopi match, because we have a robust national database, if there's a matchmaker in Seattle, which I know who they are, um, they might reach out to us, you know, once or twice a month saying, Hey, I just took on this client or, Hey, I'm currently recruiting for this client. Do you have any matches that fit this description? Mm. If I don't have you in my database, I'll never be able to consider you. Right. And this is just, it's private. No one sees it. Right. I see it. My right. team sees it. That's right. it. You right. know, but it's just a matter of like, I can't keep you in mind if you don't put yourself there. And that's right. the thing. It's like, I, I hate the notion of like, it'll happen when you least expect it. It's no, it's never like that. No. It's going to happen when you, when you put yourself there. Yeah. So doing vouch, doing match of the month, man of the month, man of yeah. the month. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really brilliant yeah. by the way. No. And, um, it's funny because my boyfriend and I met in a very... How did you meet your boyfriend? Unique way. So a friend of mine, she's a comedian in New York City. Who? Um, Emma Vernon. Okay. So she had this show during COVID where she would put two people on a stage and kind of put, put them on a date. And then if you were in the audience, you could swap out and say, hey, I think I could make a better date for that person. So it was called The Dating Show, which what? is so fun. So she reached out to me um, and she said, it's COVID. My parents had basically just sat me down and were like, what's going on with your dating life? Essentially, I was 27. You? Yeah. Oh. Um, didn't have a boyfriend. They're like, we're a little concerned. I'm like, guys, it's bleak out there. I'm trying, but it's also a global pandemic. So why don't we just, you know, sanitize you go to private the groceries? School? Did I go to private school? Yeah. I went to all girls Catholic school for two years, but I hated it. Okay. It was Everything the worst. just sorted itself out now. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Cause it's, you know, late bloomers, all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. But like, you know, the parents who you're not unique. If there were a South Asian parent right here, right now, or even a Greek parent, yeah. like a Balkan parent, they'll yeah. be like Greek, Turkish, Bulgarian, whatever. They'll yeah. be like, no dating. No dating, no yeah. dating allowed. And then you turn 27. Why aren't you married yet? <laughs> well, it's funny. My parents were actually very much 
through my life, like, oh, like go to prom. I was like, all these guys are disgusting. Like they actually, my parents actually made me go to prom with like, they didn't make me, but they like, a guy asked me and I said, absolutely not. I will vomit if I go. That My mom was like, please go, please go. It'll be a great experience though. So they were very pro me dating. I just wasn't really interested in what I had in front okay. of me basically. So um, they had a little intervention with me not intervention, but kind of like we're concerned what's uh -huh. going on. Uh, and I was like, I'm trying my best. It's a global pandemic. Let's just sanitize the groceries and move on and just let me go cry in my room and watch Netflix in the basement, whatever. Sure. So two weeks later, my friend reaches out and she's like, hey, I'm starting this matchmaking company because I can't do my dating show during COVID. Can I set you up? I said, yes, my parents think I'm a lost cause. The please. comedian now. Yes, please wow. set me up. So... My boyfriend certainly makes whiskey for a living and it's the brand is called Hill Rock. And she went on a tour of Hill Rock with her mom and boyfriend. And my boyfriend happened to be the tour guide. So um, she didn't know my boyfriend. Right. So she was approaching him from like the client perspective, uh -huh. you know. Um, so she said, you know, fill out this questionnaire. I I think I have someone in mind for you, but I want to know. So she sent him a five page questionnaire, which I'm sure you do with your clients as well. And he filled out the questionnaire and he didn't really know how the process worked. So he thought that I would see, you know, maybe his answers on our first date. So he said, I love hiking. I love cooking. Does like, he like hiking and cooking? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> like it was all like he was trying to. So we don't, I don't actually give men those forms because yeah. I do shit like that. Instead, yeah. I'll, I'm like, oh, give me your email and your, your, you know, some basic details like right. your age and where you live. And then right. I'm going to interview you. Yeah. So she, she also did that. She also did that with him, but mm -hmm. then she, um, sent him the questionnaire to fill out and then she did an interview. And, um, so this is funny. So she sends the questionnaire and my boyfriend ignores it. Like, who is this girl? Who is this girl? And then my boyfriend's mom said, she CC'd my boyfriend's mom. And the mom said, this girl and her family bought whiskey from us. You better say yes. You better do whatever she says. That's hilarious. So I have to thank Kathy Franklin for wow. <laughs> finally be, for actually setting us up and pushing Alex. Um, so yeah, then they hopped on a Zoom call and said- Your first date was over Zoom? Well, right, they had an interview over Zoom and then our first date was over Zoom. We got along immediately, connected immediately, and we've been together since then. And it's funny because she didn't tell him- my last name uh, -huh. uh and he's like i just had you in my phone as like julia matchmaking i had no idea that's hilarious but it's funny because like she didn't charge either of us anything right uh, because we're like her beta but she no longer is in the business because it's so difficult to it's a lot of regulation it's a lot of regulate it's difficult but yeah we're it's also tough like you're match. struggling yeah. trying to find one match for the month of february i know it's hard uh, i have to give like I, like our clients get like two to three matches a month yeah like, yeah it's it's hard so i have to thank her um yeah it was just right. a total random instance and i was on the apps i was yeah. doing all of those things um, well you got look she she uh that's awesome i'm so happy that you met through a friend yeah that's yeah. really wonderful yeah i love that well where can people i mean i've already been saying it but where can people find you yeah so you can find me at smarter in a sec on instagram smarter in a sec on tiktok um i also have a sub stack um smarter in a sec dot sub stack dot com and then my website smarter in a sec dot com if you want to work together one-to-one -one. that's really great julia i'm so happy you came to the ask a matchmaker podcast this was so fun yay and she got her hair and makeup done for this yes uh because these cameras are high quality and i'm bad at makeup so <laughs> listen we all know our strengths your strengths is you know content curation i can't <laughs> wait for people to see what you post because it's so much fun to Amazing. follow you and i don't say that about a lot of people i'm i'm honored yeah <laughs> thanks again julia and thank you for listening or watching ask a matchmaker if you want to follow julia or check out her stuff check out the show notes all that stuff's in there and in the show notes you're also going to see a few links about this podcast and how you can work with my team at agape match we talked about it a lot today uh, you can also follow me if you don't already so you can join me in an upcoming hotline episode Again, as we always say each week, be lovable, but more importantly, be likable. See you next week.